so I've got that little SOT23 just fits on this tester. Let's put her up and see what happens. So it is a P, P charm MOSFET and the, the VT is 0 0.93. So this definitely should work. Okay. Now look here on this screen here. So what we're looking at is the schematic. So I'll show you in a second. Here we go. So here's the um, the Q21. That's the the TO220 um, MOSFET P channel. And look at this is the AO3401. That's that little SOT23 we just tested here. So I just found what the problem was on the schematic. Look at the diode on the um, MOSFET, the direction it's going, the gate, drain and source. So what I've actually done, this one here is upside down. Whoopsie. It looks, yeah, I'll probably just rush it a bit. And I um, chucked it over here. But yeah, so basically the drain and the source are back to front. So hence why when I was using the multimeter, I was showing that it was turning on and off, which was good. It was a gate was correct but the direction of the power has gone the wrong way around so there we go guys not a mistake is hence why I don't release the schematic until I've actually soldered it up and tested the board only minor changes will I do it but anything you know major that I've had issues with and that wasn't previously working I'm gonna do it and test it before I release the schematic so there you go um, I'll have to fix these up so these boards aren't a dud per se, but I just can't use SOT23 P-channel MOSFETs on these boards. So I'll eventually I'll get around to, I'll update the schematic and update the the good old um, PCB design. And then and then all um, then we know that's going to be good. The rest of it should be tested. So that's just, that's a simple one. I'll be able to release the schematic after this. All right, problem found. And unfortunately, yeah, it's not, but I've got a couple other mods on this board and I've got the uh, the motor driver, so it's going to control the fan speed and all that, so it's kind of, I I, yeah, I need to update anyway. And hopefully uh, PCB Way might give me another free batch, if I'm lucky, well, um, maybe I'll ask them, but yeah. Alright guys, okay, the next day, back again, um, what are we up to? Just gonna put in the Dallas temperature sensors up the top, and um, so now we know what the issue is with the P channel SOT23 MOSFETs. So I'm just gonna have to use the TO220s, that's okay. I'm not too worried because these are a lot higher amperage, so and I haven't tested, but I will get the board printed again, like I was talking about before. Right, so I'm just gonna put these. Dallas temperature sensors in. Let me go through the top. Get the right orientation. Get some old blue tech again. Something about these um they're quite difficult to solder. But yeah. I'm just going to use a thinner solder. This is one of my, I bought this when I was about 14 years old, so this is quite old, but this is, uh, there's no markings on it, so I actually don't know what it is, but it's bloody good. Doing a, a visual inspection. Doesn't look like we've got any shorts. Multimeter and diode mode, just gonna check the inner pin. That's, yep, nothing there. And these are all in parallel, so yeah. No shorts there. 
Pode correr. What you're gonna do? So on this is on the bottom side. And I'm gonna do the um, the ambient sensor now. So that's the last one. Still got a breach, I'm just going to cut the legs, try it that way. Yeah, they look alright. Well, I'm pretty tricky those um these ones eh? Yep, working. Yep, no short. Good. Gonna leave that it's still a bit warm, I'll just let it cool down and I'll take it off. It seems to come off better when it's cool. Just gonna solder on the the header here for the ESP8266 and I'll also do the screen one. So yeah, silk screen side component goes there. I need to remind myself because I've bugged that up. Hell, while we add it, might add the PZO little buzzer. It's got a positive marking on here that goes towards the the Arduino side. And the other side. Also, I need to add in the diode. And on this one, the white dash goes towards the VCC on the on the um, multiplexer, and that stops um, voltage going back to the Arduino from from the multiplexer when it's turned off. Legs of the PCO. You stay a bit longer on the ground plane ones, you can see them by the shape of the pads. Not ground, the uh, copper plane. Could be top, bottom, or. Ooh, that's hot. Okay, getting there. Put this bad boy back in. Let that cool down. So, what's left to do is the. TP5100s and the B channels TA220s. Yeah, I think we're not far off it. Also, we've got to put in the, the good old um, the screw screw headers for the discharge um, re resistors, 5 watt resistors. We can do that last. Also, got to drill holes in the Battery. I'll just use uh, another PCB and I'll just drill the holes through that and that'll go good. And cut a bunch of these up. I need three times five. Just put in some blue tech. I'm trying the original method. Putting blue tech on each one. So I'm trying a different method here. I haven't sold anything up. I'll just put uh, blue take around the, the ones with the two. They're the trickiest ones to get on. I'll put them on first, then I'll slid it down, put blue tech up there, and put it over the top. So I'll just solder the bottom, they're just sticking out, and then I'll just um, I'll solder the top one once I've done the bottom. See if that works it's easier. All about trying to make it a bit easier. It's all about it's all new and experimenting. Not really sure that's that much easier. See if it gets back on right. So I think I found the easiest method now. So the single um, 
2.54 male headers. I use the short side up top, pop it in the hole. Pop the five in the hole. So upside down effectively. So I put it on, it's got this case, I just put it over top of that. And I grab TP5100, make sure I've got the charge pin down there. I'll do that one first because you've got to get line two up. And then just use a little screwdriver just to position the. There you go. And the last one, missed that one. So it just sits on top like that. And just tap, solder it, just solder it in, the corners. Just be gentle there, you don't want to lift it off. All the backs. What is to do? Take one on each side. So the ones are most flush. I'm just doing that one first. I might have to manipulate from the other side a bit. Just line it up from the other side now. Finish the rest of the shoulders. So if you plug this in now, they should. Once I put the moss uh, the, the MOSFETs in, they should turn on and off. So doing the MOSFETs now. Okay, they're all soldered in. Just going to trim the legs. Just doing a visual inspection. See if I can see any shorts. That'll trim down a little bit more just because the battery hold goes on top. Because the um, board goes on top like that, so you kind of want these to be as you know, low as possible. So you just trim them, and I just quickly just dab them with the soldering on just to clean, re, 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 yeah. Reflow the bulb, the, the blob. Alright, got the switch to go, got these, might put these in now. Four of these. Just um, 5.08 screw headers. You can see the holes go facing the outside of the board. Just make sure they're all facing the right way. Okay. Blue takes on. Crank the heat up just a fraction up to about 400. And I'm just going to use a 1.5mm solder. If I had a bigger tip for this one, I would um, I'll change it, but uh, it's only. It's only eight, eight pins we've got to solder here. So, cool. they got soldered in. So double check you got everything done here before you put on solder on this board, on the, um, before you solder on this. That's the last thing you will solder because it goes on top. Make sure it's drilled first too. Okay, getting up to the end now. It's got a little uh, six millimeter uh, single press button. So I had an issue of this last revision. These pins will back to front. Try to get as flat as you possibly can, centered. All 
Alright, that was done. Just a side note, you don't necessarily need to put the capacitor in here. Um, it's for the shift register and in the, uh, the data sheet, they said if you have issues, uh, put a uh, 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor in there. But yeah, so far I haven't had any issues with it, so I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, I'm just going to do the um, mark the holes for the case, uh, the battery holder. We've got like a, uh, uh, what does this one say? This is a 0 0.8 millimeter a little micro drill bit. Pause it up here. And these are all a bit bent, so you gotta. I like to have the posit up the top. It really doesn't matter, but if you're a little bit detail detail oriented like myself. Okay. Make sure she's pressed down nice and firm. Check the back seal all quite um, yeah, even on the little, little pins. Now this is not not the same board. I'm just but it's the same specs. So it's the center of here. So you can see on here that's the Dallas temperature sensor. So you want to get the middle pin so you get dead center. So that's the middle pin here. All we need to do is just mark it not drop it like that. So that's center pin. So we're just marking the center hole to drill the, through the battery holders so that the Dallas temperature sensor can stick out and touch the battery through the battery holders. Old Cliff on his um he made uh, the spring slot battery holders and his um he had the hole in there ready design with the um, 8 times charger I've got. So you can see here, and I'll show you here, those little score marks. So put everything, keep that, put everything else aside, out of the way. Drill bits, drill. I'm going to start with a one and a half millimeter drill bit. Trying to get too much to stick out on it. Just put on the lowest clutch setting. So these um, Dallas temperature settings, um, the TO92 or so, I can't remember. We're saying about, let's say 4.7 millimeters around that, 4.8 with a bit of clearance, 4.75. I'm sure if you're on a spec sheet, you'll get the exact one. So we need something with a bit of clearance, and obviously our hole's not going to be dead center, so I'd say 5.5 mil. Or six millimeter, or even a quarter inch, probably work. So.
Trying to get your fingers, eh? Yeah, I might go, what was that? I might go six mil, so close to quarter inch. You know, always draw bigger, but you can't draw smaller, can you? That's nice. Hmm. I think you trim down some of these. Trim down the GC, DC jack a bit. Ah, uh -huh, so some of these, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a couple of these MOSFETs are. Cut down these MOSFET pins a bit more. Okay, we're on the money. So that's how the, we go on top, fits straight in there. A little bit of massaging we've got there. Still a bit of gap there. And once you put the screws in, it'll, it'll hold it down if you torque them down equally. And they just touch the top so you can touch the battery when they sit down the bottom there. Beautiful. So all that's left to do now is before I solder the um, battery holder in, I'm just going to test it. So let's do that now. Still should have that test code on there. Yep. So it's on off for five, one second. That's the thing, hey, you've got any like legs and stuff that could short circuit the thing and make sure your workspace is fairly clean when you put all PCBs down. And it's just cycling through it. Should be able to test the MOSFETs as well. Yeah, pretty rock and roll, eh? So yeah, it's pretty much what we're gonna do is put the your mounting holes for the liquid crystal display. Just like, just like that, and mount the ESP eight two six six to put the stand off there. Screw it in. Put in the resistors and then should be ready to test. Got an M3 tap here. I'll just check the, the um, pitch and it seems the same as my standard fine trick uh, M3s. Put on a clutch. Yeah, it's gonna tap the box. Put these holes in here, there's a two point. So well, that's alright. Get 
it a bit warm. Longer. So hopefully maybe they might dig it down a bit deeper. Nice. Yeah, that's good. Probably those first couple of threads have just stripped out. I still haven't got the uh, uh, 30 mil by 30 mil by 10 mil uh, 12 volt fan fan yet. So I'm still waiting for that. Smallest I've got is a uh, 40 mil, so still too big. That worked all right. Well, these front ones seem a bit better. Yeah, that'll work. It's got enough grip there. That tap's not very good either. <laughs> it's cheap, cheap. Crap. I love the bike, I could see the taps one day. Just leave those in, I reckon. Yes, yeah, so the fan sits on the outside. I'll have long M3 screws just go through and hold it in. The wire comes through on the inside, and there'll be a clip on, on the new, new board side, got a clip on here, and there'll be like a little 2mm JST connector straight on there. It's got a uh, good size um, trans NPN transistor and it's just powered by a PWM pin on the Audrino and Bob's your uncle. Yeah, that's all you care about, eh? It's going to have a lid on top anyway, so that'll be extra holding strength. It's just, just... Yeah, she ain't going nowhere. Great. Still happy with that case. Turned out really well. Love that Ender 3 printer. It is cool. A little bit more to go on this, and we should be done today. Alright, catch up.